Now, remember when George Bush Sr. gave us the reason for the New World Order? Remember when he said that a credible United Nations could fulfill the role, the promise, and the vision of its founders? Now, I want to be clear so that you hear it correctly, because most people think that, well, that the United Nations is a peacekeeping organization. That's not true. Notice that he says that the UN will use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the vision of its founders. So it's the role they play. It's not peacekeeping. The role is to fulfill the promise and vision of the founders. If you don't remember, here's the clip. An order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. A world where the United Nations, freed from Cold War stalemate, is poised to fulfill the historic vision of its founders. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. Now, the United Nations was founded by members of the Council on Foreign Relations, who are but one of many of the roundtable organizations created by the Celsa Rhodes Milner Group, who were later absorbed into the Rockefeller Consortium and their many roundtable organizations, including the Royal Institute of International Affairs, or Chatham House, or the Club of Rome, Budapest, and Madrid, or the Bilderberg Group, who, with the common goal of a new world order, a one world government created, well, as we mentioned before, the U.S. Federal Reserve System, the League of Nations, the International Monetary Fund, the United Nations, the World Bank, the World Health Organization, the European Union and the Euro Currency, the World Trade Organization, the African Union, and the Union of the South American Nations. And now, through the United Nations, which they've also created, they've disguised their new world order as Agenda 21 and Agenda 2030 for sustainable development. Now, this is being implemented again through their global to local public-private partnerships with the United Nations, with NGOs, governments, and corporations implementing world government down to the neighborhood level with their 17 Sustainable Development Goals, their three E's, and their ESG's, Environmental Social Governance. Fulfilling the promise and vision of the United Nations founders is to implement the New World Order, or the One World Government System. So sustainable development is the Trojan horse that got global governance down to the very neighborhood level in every area of the world. Michael Shaw, in his lecture entitled The Nature of Sustainable Development, provides a good overview of the essential elements of the United Nations Agenda 21. Sustainable development has become the popularized expression for Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is the 1992 United Nations Rio Declaration on the Environment and Development. It is the agenda for the 21st century you're living in today. For a brave new world where everything that you cherished and held true will no longer exist. Agenda 21 defines itself as the comprehensive plan of action to be taken globally, nationally, and locally by organizations of the United Nations systems. It also elevates nature above man. And it contains something called the precautionary principle, where basically you're guilty until you're proven innocent. Sustainable development is the philosophy designed to bring human beings across the globe under the full control of a narrow human elite. It's a 40 chapter document to basically control the world. Sustainable developers have designed a global movement coordinated through a global to local action plan to create world government in accordance with certain objectives. These objectives include an end to national sovereignty, the abolition of private property, the restructure of the family unit, and increasing limitations and restrictions on mobility and individual opportunity. How in the world do these roundtable groups who created the United Nations plan to push through Agenda 21 and its 17 Sustainable Development Goals and ESG's Environmental Social Governance to implement world government and actually make it last? Well, it's easy. According to them, you just steal a generation of children. Here again is freedomadvocates.org with Yuri Bezmanov. It has been asked many times how 
the people who are perpetrating these things expect to do this and make it last? And the answer to that is that you steal a generation of children and you indoctrinate them so that they accept these ideas and they become global citizens in the coming global village. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? Because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism. UNESCO came out and declared 2005 to 2015 the decade of education for sustainable development. But they go on to say that it will encompass the 40 chapters of Agenda 21. That is your federal national curriculum. The entire purpose of second grade social studies is to transfer loyalty from the family to the government and teach them about sustainable economic consumption. Students construct their own understandings of reality and realize that objective reality is not knowable. This is our new uh, math called connected mathematics. Standard 3 tells us that students learn that mathematics is man-made, that it is arbitrary, and good solutions are arrived at by consensus. Most of us assume 2 plus 2 is always going to equal 4. You're wrong. We might reach a new consensus. I thought that dumbing down was a natural consequence of a bad idea. Folks, it's deliberate. It's deliberate. Stealing a generation of children is no small task. How do you indoctrinate so many children in such a small period of time? Well, according to them, it's easy. You turn public schools into indoctrination programs using administrators educated at ed schools. They admit doing this from time to time a statement or some content addressing where we are in that process, uh, something brief. Uh, Dr. Ziegler, would you be interested in providing that to the community in back to school? Uh, everything that Mr. Mehevdi mentioned is part of the rollout plan. So we have a, a pretty robust indoctrination plan uh, ready to go, enculturation plan for this ready to go as we move into the new school year. Thank you, Dr. Ziegler. In the next clip, Dr. Lyle Asher from Lewis and Clark University explains this in detail that, well, professors are partly to blame, but it's the influx of school administrators who come in and implement the SDGs within school systems through equity, diversity, and equality programs, social justice reform, and do things like conduct diversity hearings, create offices of multicultural affairs through diversity, inclusion, equity, and social justice programs and perform the heavy lifting when it comes to groupthink shallow activism and the I support the next new thing, culture of brain dead zombie drones looking to feast upon the flesh of traditional cultural values. These woke administrators through ed schools have these advanced degrees who brainwash and indoctrinate thousands of these administrators with this social justice nonsense, gender ideology nonsense, equity, equality, diversity, and inclusion nonsense higher education degrees, but are anything but higher education as they have the lowest academic standards possible. They are really degrees provided to get them jobs as administrators into schools, colleges, and universities. This creates an army of social justice drones who then get admin jobs and implement social justice ideologies into school systems by what's known as the Fabianistic tactic, by stealth and secrecy, through peace and politics, 